Have you seen any differences, again, big picture between, say, training a male athlete versus a female athlete? A lot of the males aren't going to like this when I say this, but <laughs> the female athletes learn a lot quicker than the male athletes because okay. the female athletes don't have the male ego. They want to <laughs> learn. They don't care. The men, they don't want to be told what to do. You've got to kind of break it to the men softly because, like I said, the egos. But if t- <laughs> I tell a woman to, hey, a female fighter to go jump yeah. rope for 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. She's gonna be like, okay, w- what else do you want me to do? And the guy's like, why do I have to do it for 10 minutes? Why can't I do it for five? You know? Yes. Why do you do this? Why? And it's not <laughs> questioning because they want to know, it's questioning because they don't like to be told what to do. The female fighters that I, at least I've worked with, they seem mm-hmm. to pick up a lot quicker than, than the, the male. The men in the chat may not like it, but I'm sure the ladies <laughs> are loving hearing that for sure. Bigway's daughter, um, I see she just put up a question about Nicole. So Nicole is not only one of the best jazz singers I ever heard, but she's also one of my best friends. And she and she wants to know what, what type of training we did. We did just yeah. a lot of um, cardio and calisthenics, you know, push-ups, pull-ups. We did some weights here and there, but nothing, nothing heavy because Nicole, she's just has the genetics to be i mean she's <laughs> like she, she doesn't have to do anything compared to what i would have to do for a workout so gotcha. Our meat. Hers just, yeah hers just mostly like lightweight high reps gotcha gotcha speaking of guys i think you know this gentleman robert <laughs> Hello, Mr. Dem. Hello. Hello, yeah, not, not as exciting as it was for the, I did have a good run, but now I'm kind of slowing down a bit, but hopefully I start traveling again. All right. Well, I see Aaron, you were looking at like a space to uh, open a gym again, hopefully. Yeah, but let's, um, let's keep the partner quiet. <laughs> let, let, let people know who I'm opening the gym with quite yet. I'm doing a gym in, in Brooklyn. I had originally moved out. Thank you, man. I originally moved right. so as RJ knows, the gym that I had in Wynwood, the guy sold the building and knocked it down. So I was literally on a movie with Matt Damon for the Jason Bourne when I found out. So when I got done, I had that movie. Then I had a movie called Downsizing with him. That was mm-hmm. a film in Toronto. And then we had reshoots in China. And then when I got done from China for, for the Great Wall reshoots, now I kind of knew in the beginning of the summer, he told me, but I was just like, I didn't want to come to realization that I was, my gym was going to close. So I was just like, maybe the deal's going to fall through. And I right. kept it through. Mm-hmm. And then that was about the time when we had the whole Zika thing, because my oh. gym is really ground zero for Zika. Oh, no. I just got hit with all this bad news. And then I was like, I'll, I'll go out to L.A. for a year. Then I'll, yeah. I'll go open one in New York or head back to Miami. And here I am five years later, finally in Brooklyn. One quick question yeah. for Tamika. I trained Halsey before she she had her baby. And I did the, the, the music video called Strangers with her. And so I helped with the, the fight choreography, like a boxing consultant, and then also trained her and Lauren. Uh, boxing before we shot the video very professional you know because she's young she was young at the time i think maybe like 25 or 26 and i could mm-hmm. not believe how professional she was like that video was actually the first video that she did not direct but oh, you could okay. see like how creative she was like mm-hmm. the director kind of wanted to go to the one way and then she'd call me in the back and she's like is this how they throw punches and i'm just like no and then she'd like pull me by the hand and he said this is how i'm gonna now i'm just like oh my god like it was just but you gotta respect it, man. It's like, it's her video, it's her yeah. thing. It was pretty awesome. Big shout out to the Super Chat. I'm very appreciative of people who give me their hard earned money. So Igwe's daughter, I really appreciate that Super Chat. You get the harm. <laughs> Yeah. Like I said, everybody's different. Like, so Ted Waite is in his 50s, very slender. Thomas Buckley, chef at Nobu. His body physique is very um, deceiving because he's he's very heavy set. And the things that he does is just insane for a guy his size. I just love what I do is because uh, she's asking, like, how do I go from a physical specimen like Antonio Brown, D. Wade, and King James? It has to be crazy. It's such a contrast. It is. But I like, so you have somebody like King James and Antonio Brown and D. Wade mm-hmm. who do not know anything about boxing. To see them get so upset with themselves because in the sport that they are they're the best in what they do you can't deny it like at each of their positions like all three of those guys are probably in the top 10 ever in the history of their sport right but they get so frustrated with on what they're doing but they'll go home and they'll go home and i guarantee you they'll come in the next day and they'll know everything i taught them because it bugs them that much like i'll give an example training Teddy Bridgewater when he was with Louisville before he started playing pro ball. Mm-hmm. I was teaching him some stuff and he goes, can I come back tomorrow coach? And I'm like, yeah, man, come back. Like yeah. came back, everything I taught him, he mm-hmm. knew it. He'd been doing it for 10 years. Oh, wow. Um, but then you have somebody like Ted Waite and Thomas Buckley that Ted, you know, owned one of the biggest computer corporations, Gateway Computers. Then you got yeah. Thomas Buckley who's, you know, cooking some of the best, you know, Japanese food on the planet. And mm-hmm. it's great to watch those guys. All of them want to learn the sport of boxing. And I think that's what motivates me is when I get somebody that doesn't really seem to be interested, I either 
pass them off to another trainer or I just won't. Because sometimes you just don't mesh with who you're training. I, I feel that why well, put pain on the both of us? <laughs> sometimes they, you just don't click or you just don't you just don't have it. It's kind of like right. dating, I guess. Yeah. So I just either pass them off to somebody or or just have a sit down and say, hey, is there something I could do different? What am I doing wrong? What are you not enjoying? And I just try to make it you know enjoyable for everybody. Right. Well, just to be clear, I did enjoy training with you but I was very often quite miserable at the same time. So just go on the same page. Yeah, just, yeah you got to, got to know when the, to push the limits. Igwe's daughter is asking me if I ever work, uh, what are my thoughts on MMA? Have I ever worked with any anyone that practices it or is in the UFC? I actually trained a girl named Erin Tohill, who was the first female MMA fighter and first female boxer to ever be ranked in both sports in the top 10 at the same time. And wow. we actually had the first major sanctioned fight. I, yeah. I can't remember what was the, the WBC title, but I had, well, we, we fought Leila Ali, which we lost. And then I fought, I trained another guy named Pas Patrick Asaloni, who, who was the WEF champion, who was, mm -hmm. that was the big league before UFC came out. So I, I do get to work with them. I think they're combat sports athletes, so you have to have respect for them. I don't really watch it too much because I'm just a boxing guy. It's like somebody says, "Hey, you're gonna watch tennis over boxing?" No, I'm gonna take boxing. <laughs> I just think it's it's another sport where I don't think the positives outweigh the negatives. At the end of the day, you get a belt and some money in your bank account. But if you look at the mm. the lifespan of a UFC fighter compared to a, a boxing guy. Boxers usually can hang on a lot longer than a UFC yeah. guy. Like it changes so much, and I think that's why they're so cheap with their pay is because they build these fighters up, and then they finally have one or two big paydays and then after that they take a loss and then they either fire them or they're just they just can't compete anymore it's a rough sport man you're getting kicked you're getting choked yeah. you're getting your like every legs broke your arms broke but yeah man i i like i said i love training everybody if you want to mm -hmm. learn i'm there yeah they definitely get a lot more headshots because with ground and pound you know when somebody's mounted so no, see, see, I don't, I don't agree with that. So, yeah, how many different ways are there to stop your opponent in the UFC? You have arm bars, leg mm -hmm. bars, chokes, right? Yep. Kicking, kneeing, not everything in boxing. It's just concentrated from the waist up, so it's right. your head, mm -hmm. arms down to your waist, and yeah. from, from here forward. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. If you take the comparisons of a boxing match. Okay. And you match and see the comparison of headshots landed. I guarantee you, it's boxing every time. That makes sense. That makes sense. I guess it just looks so devastating on TV. But you're right because a lot of times in boxing, they punch so fast, you have to see the replays to see the guy's head snapping back. The UFC guys, they can take punches, but I don't think as good as the fight the boxers can. And the same thing, with boxers. I don't think boxers are going to take those kicks for sure. No, no, no. It's like when you saw the guy, the the, the Irish guy. What's his name again? When he did fought me, uh, Greg. Yeah, McGregor. I mean, in Ooh. UFC, he looks like a super boxer, but against a real super boxer, he looks yeah. like an amateur boxer. <laughs> I think personally that Mayweather held him up for 10 rounds. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> and was placing, have his friends placing bets all around Vegas for 10 <laughs> rounds. There's no way that McGregor would McGregor. ever last more than three rounds with Mayweather or any other professional fighter. Yeah. And more than yeah. three rounds in the top 10. Because you are determined to transform your body, you made it to the end of this video. To get more tips about how to look great and feel even better, check out one of these videos you see on the screen. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. Salita's my massive. Miagalang now. For those who don't speak Jamaican Patois, that's goodbye, my people.